Hey, math people. Do you smell that? Trees growing, flowers blooming, neighbors throwing backyard barbecues. No, not springtime. It's standardized testing season. Hey, I, I didn't make the rules here. I am but a mere pawn, just like you. Um, except you're the one actually doing the standardized tests, and I'm the one, well, watching. Well, here's the thing. I can help you, um, so long as you're in your most stressful time, a junior taking the SAT. So the SAT saw some serious changes a few years back. Uh, good news, you can guess the wrong answer, and it's okay. You won't be punished for being wrong. Uh, and, well, the bad news is... Uh, test is harder, a lot more words, a lot more reading, list kind of goes on. The fact that you have to take it kind of stands alone as uh, misery in itself. Um, but let's try to ease the pain. Uh, the purpose of this video is to go over the necessary formulas for the SAT. I'm going to go over the formulas that you need to know. I'm going to go over the formulas that they give you on the test itself. Uh, you know, that page that everybody seems to skip over simply because it looks like an instruction page. But it has some good information on there. And then what I'm going to do is go over the formulas that I found to be useful on the test. So the ones that they don't give you, the ones that you sort of have to, um, I hate to use this word, but memorize. Uh, and, and maybe you can kind of store those into your temporary uh, memory bank before the test and then regurgitate it all out. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the ones they give you first. Okay, what we're dealing with here is the little information page that they'll give you before you take the math portions of the SAT. And notice how I said portions. There's actually two math tests on the SAT. There's the non-calculator, which is test three, and then there's the calculator, which is test four. Um, this information page here, though, is roughly the same for both. So uh, what I want to talk about up here is points two and three. Those are the ones worth mentioning. So two says all variables and expressions used represent real numbers unless otherwise indicated. This is good. So um, what if they gave you a problem with I involved? Uh, well, uh, if they're referring to the imaginary unit, they're going to specifically say for i, where i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Um, this is just an added disclaimer for that. Uh, it's nice to know that they're not trying to trick you. 3 says that figures provided in the test are drawn to scale unless otherwise indicated. This one's really good. So, uh, you know, geometry on the SAT was sort of nixed out into a corner. Actually, the SAT it doesn't have a lot of geometry at all. It's mostly algebra and algebra 2. So um, that's either for better or for worse. What I will say, though, is the geometry questions that you do see, uh, they're drawn to scale, most of them, unless they say they're not, but they are going to be. So the ones that are drawn to scale, that they have no added uh, sort of disclaimer to it, uh, you can sort of guess your way towards angle measurements and lengths uh, based on what they give you. So I don't actually encourage that. I will say, though, that if you're in a rut and you do not have much time left on the SAT and you're really struggling with the geometry problem, uh, use this to your advantage. Play around with estimations based on what you think um, an angle might be or what you think a, a side length might, might be. So that, that's worth mentioning there. Um, the formulas that they do give you, though, are all geometry-based. So they give you a lot of area formulas. They give you um, the Pythagorean theorem, special right triangle ratios, and a lot of volume formulas. Um, like I said, geometry, really not a large portion of the SAT, though. So you can refer to these formulas. You just won't be referring to them very often. Um, for what I did see, though, uh, most of the geometry questions were on circles, quadrilaterals, and triangles. Those were what I saw the most of. Not to say the other ones won't show up, um, but those are the most frequent ones. I, I will say that. Um, lastly, they give you the number of degrees of an arc in a circle is 360. And they're also going to give you the number of radians of an arc in a circle is 2 pi. So they give you that little conversion between radi radians and degrees. The last thing they give you, and I have no clue why they, they made a point to put this on the information section, it says the sum of the measures in degrees of the angles of a triangle is 180. You should know that. Don't know why they're, they're telling you that. It's a little bizarre to me. But anyways, this is what they give you. How about we go over what they don't give you? Okay, so the SAT had lots of lines. And there are two main equations that kind of come into play with lines. Uh, one is slope-intercept form, y is equal to mx plus b. And the other one is the equation to find the slope. So um, if you're given two ordered pairs, um, calculate the change in y over the change of x to find the slope. Uh, this is considered the heart of algebra to uh, the SAT, which means you're going to see a lot of these. These were probably the most relevant formula, specifically slope-intercept, that I saw next to uh, what's to come. 
Okay, so quadratics, lots of quadratics and beyond, so higher degrees as well. Uh, this is considered the uh, passport to advanced math-ish topics, some of them, most of these. Uh, so now there are three forms of quadratics that you should know. There's standard form, there's um, intercept form, and then there's vertex form. So with these three forms, you should be able to convert between, um, between all three. Um, you should be able to identify what's the useful aspects of all three. And um, you should also be able to move beyond just quadratics and play around that with that idea um, with, say, cubic or um, you know, fourth degree, fifth degree polynomials, etc. All right, let's very quickly just talk about the advantages of all three of the forms. Standard form here, it's in its simplest form. You can write any degreed polynomial in standard form. It just has to be in descending order of powers, so like 3, 2, 1, 0. Uh, here we have intercept form. Intercept form, I saw a lot of intercept form, a lot of work on finding uh, x-intercepts, and that's the advantage to intercept form. You can actually set both of these linear binomials equal to zero, and that allows you to actually solve for the x-intercepts. And this is applied to not just quadratics, but any polynomial that is written in this uh, product of linear binomials form. This allows you to find the x-intercepts easily. The last one here is vertex form of quadratics. Uh, it, this allows you to manipulate certain values. So if you manipulated the a value, it might make the parabola skinnier or wider. If you manipulate the h value, that will apply a um, horizontal shift to it. And if you manipulate the k value, that will apply a vertical shift to the parabola. And this general idea can be applied to a lot of different types of polynomials, any polynomial really. Uh, and it goes even beyond that. You can apply that to cubic roots, square roots, uh, absolute values, any, any parent function. Uh, this general idea is in play with that. Okay, here are the others. So the ones that weren't used as frequently as the last two groups, but still showed up. Um, here we have the exponential growth and decay formula, uh, where A represents your starting value or y-intercept, and B represents either your growth or decay factor. Uh, I saw a good amount of this. Um, here I have the equation for a circle in green down here. It's the uh, quantity of x minus h squared plus the quantity of y minus k squared, and that's equal to r squared. Um, so h and k, those allow you to make uh, either um, horizontal or vertical shifts to the circle, and then r affects the radius of the circle. Didn't see too, too much of this, but it showed up on most of the ones that I looked at. Um, i squared is equal to negative 1, so on the ones that do have i, the imaginary unit, in play, uh, they will give you the disclaimer that uh, i is equal to the square root of negative 1, but they don't tell you that i squared is equal to negative 1. I mean, of course you can use your, your intuition there based on what they give you, and maybe that might be enough of a cue for it to click on, oh yes, I remember i squared is equal to negative 1, um, but you know, maybe it doesn't. So this is one of the other ones that you should know uh, before entering the uh, SAT. And the last one is how to convert uh, rational exponents. So going from a fractional exponent to radical notation, you know, playing around with the index and power. So if you have x to the p over qth power, this can be rewritten as the qth root of x to the pth power. So there's one more, sorry, I was looking at my notes and I forgot this guy. Uh, the quadratic formula, sorry. Uh, you can use this to uh, solve quadratic equations or to find the zeros of parabolas, same, same thing. Uh, so this also shows up as well. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the SAT formulas that I found most often. So remember, that doesn't mean I covered them all. Those are the ones that I saw uh, most frequently when I took the practice SATs. Remember those before the day of the SAT and good luck. I'm going to continue mathing on. I hope you did the same. I'll see you in the next video.